More than 35 years after the first Legend of Zelda, one of video gaming's most recognisable names will finally front an adventure of her own. Fans have clamoured to play as Zelda for years, of course, and yet Nintendo has previously resisted keeping Link as the silent avatar of players' adventures. That all changes in the upcoming The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, the reveal of which this year was one of Nintendo's biggest surprises for some time. Tom Phillips, editor-in-chief of Eurogamer, shared his impressions of Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom with me, Zoe Delahunty Light, to answer one burning question. Why has it taken so long for Zelda to be the star? The answer lies in something even more remarkable than simply controlling the series princess, and something which guarantees this isn't just another Zelda with an alternate silent hero, the game-changing Echo ability. Early on, as Zelda attempts to escape the dungeons of Hyrule Castle, she dons a cloak previously worn by Link and is briefly mistaken for him. I can't blame you for expecting her to produce the Master Sword from a hidden pocket and start swinging, but Echoes of Wisdom is not that kind of game, and is much better for it. Where Link's most common starting item is something to start hitting enemies with, Zelda's fancy new Tri-Rod tool allows you to conjure up echoes of objects you've seen previously. In video game terms, you don't have a weapon per se, but a toolkit with which to solve a problem, a puzzle or a group of enemies that needs clearing, through other means. You quickly amass a library of in-game assets available to spawn and despawn into and out of being, from garden variety objects such as barrels and boulders, to every kind of enemy you encounter. There's a playfulness here, a sense that experimentation is something to be encouraged. Need to cross a gap? One of the first echoes you can access is a bed, perfect for bridging spaces and walking across, plus you can also choose to use it for a quick nap. Need some cover to hide in as enemies near your position? Wave the tri-rod to summon a large potted plant to duck behind. Your new magical staff is powered by Tri, the Zelda series' latest companion character, and one you'll want to keep an eye on. Tri's pixel-like tail indicates how many echoes you can create at any one time. You start the game able to conjure three at once, but it looks like this will be upgradable. As an echo is created, Tri's tail shortens. When you remove that echo, it grows back. It's a handy visual guide for how many more echoes you have to play with. Echoes provide you with a range of options with which to solve puzzles, further explore and do battle. And the system feels both powerful and inventive. Being attacked by a flying bat enemy? Call upon a moblin with a bow and arrow to shoot it down. Alternatively though, you could pop down a spiny shelled critter in front of you and watch the bats dive bomb that instead, finishing themselves off. Bat enemies can be used for gliding. Spiders can be used to ascend their dangling silk threads. At one point, Tom acquired an echo for a giant slab of meat, with the hint that it would be useful to distract a certain type of enemy in the future. He would later summon up the meat to feed an enemy he thought would love it, only to see them ignore the meal. Still, having that giant steak lying there meant he'd accidentally penned the enemy in allowing him to fire off an armadillo enemy that pinballed off of surfaces, crashing around the meat to flatten everything in its path. The Echoes system gets deeper too, thanks to the inclusion of physics and elemental systems that might seem more at home in Breath of the Wild. Heavy boulders placed on top of breakable objects won't necessarily crush what's underneath, for example, but summoning them while up high, then heaving them down on top of something breakable or directly onto an enemy, below will do the job, thanks to their momentum. Using the bind power you unlock in the game's first dungeon, you can move large objects in the game's world or echoes you've summoned from afar. At one point, Tom learned the echo of a fiery enemy, and then realised he needed to burn some crates to progress. Being able to pick up the fiery enemy using bind was a far better option than trying to pick it up himself and getting burned, as he quickly discovered. 
for a veteran Zelda fan, the ability to spawn in-game assets and create a small troop of enemies to do your bidding feels like you're playing a version of the game with cheat codes. Wonder who would win between a dark nut enemy and a pack of moblins? Summon the latter up as echoes and then sit back to find out. One of the most outlandish moments was gaining the ability to echo a child's trampoline. Seconds later, Tom could now land on top of the previously unreachable treetops and roofs of houses. While Echoes feels remarkable, Nintendo has balanced their introduction with a game that otherwise still has the feel of a classic top-down Zelda. Ignoring the series' labyrinthine timeline, this is quite clearly a sequel to the Nintendo Switch remake of Link's Awakening in technical terms, with many familiar enemies and elements, the same visual design and the same underlying game engine, with the associated frame rate slowdown sadly still present. There are side-scrolling platform sections, though there were no Goombas to be seen, and you can still spin to cut grass. Echoes of Wisdom's dungeons are also fairly traditional, and appear to take place within the rifts which have covered Hyrule, in a location Nintendo has dubbed the Still World. Inside, you initially have to navigate areas where Zelda must hop between broken chunks of landmass that look a little like Dragon Age's Fade. But before too long, you find yourself in more familiar surroundings, clearing rooms with distinct puzzles, navigating around via a dungeon map. And then there's Sword Fighter mode, the introduction of which does allow Zelda to finally wield a blade. After such a captivating introduction to Echoes as the way you interact with the game's world, part of Tom wondered what the point was of Zelda's sword, just sticking with the pointy end. But this option feels different enough, a time-limited effect to let you attack directly until you deplete an upgradable bar of energy, and gives our princess another power in her arsenal. It may have taken decades, but Nintendo has finally found an answer to those calls to play as Zelda, with gameplay that feels different enough that this could never be just another Link adventure. At the same time, brilliantly, Echoes of Wisdom manages to still feel like a proper Zelda game, rather than being a more forgettable princess-led spin-off such as Princess Peach Showtime. Tom said that he can't wait to see more of Echoes of Wisdom, a game that hosts the inventiveness of Tears of the Kingdom, but within perhaps more manageable limits, that wraps this in the DNA of classic top-down entries such as Link's Awakening. And, most importantly of all, looks set to stand on its own as a remarkable entry in the series' main canon. Finally, this is Zelda's moment to shine. And that is what Tom Phillips thinks of The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom so far. A big thanks to him from me, Zoe Dillahunty-like, for sharing his impressions with me, and you can read his full preview on Eurogamer.net right now. Is this what you expected from Zelda's first playable outing? Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to Eurogamer for more videos about, surprise surprise, video games, and thanks so much for choosing to spend your time with me. Now, I am going to go and revisit Zelda's stunningly practical outfits in Breath of the Wild, not sarcasm, and try to replicate her hairstyle, so I will see you folks next time.